you would see more different critters, life, you know, you won't even recognize them as being animals, in one hour than you will the rest of your life. Is not every day you get to swim with a 200 pound fish. I've always been a bit of an animal nut, and to me, this means you can be in the midst of them by just falling off the side of the boat. Queensland, Northern Australia. With over two million foreign visitors a year, tourism is big business here. It's an industry that earns the state economy an annual equivalent of just over six billion US dollars. People come here for year-round sunshine and white sandy beaches, but for many, the real highlight is nature tourism. Because Queensland is home to not one, but two World Heritage Sites, a 70,000-year-old rainforest, and of course, the Great Barrier Reef. Stretching 2,000 kilometers, the Great Barrier Reef is the largest natural structure on Earth. The coral reef is a complex ecosystem. Supporting an estimated million species, it's a kind of underwater botanical garden. Port Douglas is one of the main gateways to the Great Barrier Reef, and tourism has turned this former fishing town into a holiday mecca. But now some of those closest to the reef fear for its future. American-born John Rumney knows the area better than most. He's lived and worked here for over 30 years. The reef is probably my heart and soul in the fact that I left the States to come here to explore it and I'm still totally fascinated by it. Today, John is skipper and manager of Undersea Explorer, a diving company committed to ecotourism. But 10 years ago, saving the environment wasn't as high on his list of priorities. I was a commercial fisherman, but that's how you had to make a living and to be with nature. You had to pick these kind of professions. It was before tourism, and you couldn't just be rich and sail around on a yacht, you know? So once I became aware that there were less and less fish, then I changed my life more and more. John grew increasingly uncomfortable with the culture of commercial fishing. People used to call it a primary industry. No, it's an extractive industry like mining and if you over once mine's extracted it's gone it's catch it today if I don't catch it somebody else is going to catch that fish it's a very competitive industry they don't really care that it's going to be there for 40 years for their grandchildren you know, it's going to be a lovely week we got some excellent weather yeah it's going to be 10 to 15 knots at least for, the first for John running a tourist business is now an opportunity to work with natural resources rather than simply exploiting them Undersea Explorer is a unique ecotourism product that combines adventure diving with marine biology research. We have our own biologists on every week, and we also give free space to other guest researchers every week. Tropical coral is a delicate organism. It's only found in water with a temperature range of about 16 to 31 degrees Celsius. A rise of only one or two degrees can have a massive impact on coral health. Global warming, caused by greenhouse gas emissions, has raised the average temperature of the waters around the Great Barrier Reef, and there's no sign yet of it cooling down. The result is coral bleaching. Healthy coral gets its exotic colouring from the algae living in its tissue. It's a mutually beneficial arrangement. The algae not only lends colour, but brings food. The coral offers protection. But as the water warms, the algae leave, exposing the white coral skeletons. If the water cools down, the algae can return. If not, the coral will die and marine life with it. As a diver, John Rumney has seen the damage close up. I don't think we can ever use the word pristine again, and, I, and that's a real disappointment because one of my great loves of the Barrier Reef was how incredibly wild it was and virgin or pristine. Everywhere you go, you are now seeing impacts. We have lost dive sites. We've dealt with it because we're flexible. Uh, I'm concerned because I am aware enough of what's happened around the world in the Maldives and the Caribbean. If that happens here, 
what do I get to show the guest? The picture may not always be pretty, but John Rumney prefers his tourists to see the real deal. One of the things I have learned too is that with proper interpretation uh, and, and talks from biologists and researchers, you can take these people to these damaged sites. And we often, depending on the guests, we'll often throw in one of those dives a week to just let them know what we've been talking about. So I think that proper representation from tourism is important because if you're taking a picture postcard and putting that all over your brochures and when the diver gets there there's 10 pieces of coral and a clam you know it, you have unhappy guests and the whole reputation of the Great Barrier Reef is being affected. Plenty of large tourism operators are quite paranoid that if the wrong media message gets out people will stop coming. We're sort of plodding along here going well, we want to have a healthy environment so people will come here forever. Australia is a vast space with a relatively small population, but the country leaves a big carbon footprint, per capita, the industrialized world's fourth largest. But switching to using biodiesel made from reprocessed vegetable oils can reduce the carbon emissions that help create global warming. John Romney is keen to find out more. Uh, I'm heading over to Mossman uh, to meet Rod and his wife who run, are producing biodiesel to see if we can use it on Undersea Explorer. As uh, from all reports, it's definitely a superior environmental product. And uh, we hope to reduce the uh, pollutants that we are contributing not only to the atmosphere but also to the barrier reef. Rod and Michelle Miller have been running evergreen biofuels for just under a year. It's the only commercial biodiesel plant in far north Queensland. Good, good to see you. For a while. How you been? Oh good. You How's the boat going? Oh good, but that's why I'm here. I want you to teach me and tell me all about this biodiesel and see if I, you know, can get it changed over and what it means. Okay, so what the, this, this is it here. Um, it, it started off as recycled oil from restaurants, fish and chip shops, anywhere where we could find it. But it has to be vegetable oil um, because it's of the carbon chain. You're taking the carbons, the only emissions out of your exhaust pipe when you use it is carbon dioxide. I've heard some really good points about how it uh, is maybe better for motors, but also other people have said, oh no, you're supposed to run regular diesel every fourth tank or something. What's Well, is, look, there's a lot of misinformation around. If it's proper biodiesel, it's got to be manufactured to a standard. Right. Proper biodiesel replaces mineral fuel. You simply totally. pull up, put it in your fuel tank and drive away. Well, how much are you looking for? Uh, about 2,000 litres a week. Oh, 2,000 litres a week I can do for you, yeah, we have too much problem. On a regular? On a regular oh, basis, yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as some... Um, and what price will that be? It's a dollar ten a litre. Well, that's cheaper than in the Bowser right now. Well, it's a dollar yeah. forty at the Bowser, yeah. I think, at the moment. Someone told me this morning. Okay. That's the fuel there. Just um, have a feel of it. Have a feel of it there. See how lubricant it is in your fingers? Yeah. Okay, taste it. Taste it. It's nothing like diesel, is it? No. I mean, no, that would be... Yeah, but this is... Nothing like it. Nothing it's like just it. Just like an oil. That, it's I renewable, reusable. I can't resource. believe there's been, you know, resistance from people to use it. Well, I think that comes from the fuel companies. You know, there's only a few of them in the world, and um, we're all little people. And um, I think it's, it's all going to change over the next 20 or 30 years. Put a bit of foam on it. Reckon we could drink it. Yeah, it looks that good, doesn't it? Yeah. Evergreen manufactures 40,000 liters of biodiesel a week from a wide variety of sources. Michelle Miller ensures the end product is consistent. Some restaurants use their oil a lot and it comes in very acid. And some restaurants, like generally from like five star restaurants, is of beautiful quality and needs very little pre-treatment. We have a fuel standard we have to meet. 